Hello and today I'm going to be giving you a guided walkthrough of the new Enzyme X PDF takeoff software. So the first thing that I'm going to do just before we go and create a project is just take you through what these three different icons do up here. So your first one here um, is your support button. So if you need any assistance with anything with regards to the software, please by all means get in contact with us by the whatever means you prefer. There's also a bunch of helpful resources there for any self-help that you would like to do as well. And then to the left of that, we have a little cogwheel. And what this is, is the global settings for the system. So anything that's actually done in here is then going to affect all future projects. And then finally, you have your cloud storage button. Now, this is something that you are going to have to use when uploading your different drawings uh, to get them actually onto the software. So I will start off by showing you how to do this. So just give this button a press, which is going to open up your cloud storage. And what we're going to want to do then is go inside this drawings folder. So I'm going to come into here and this is where we're going to upload our drawings to. Now there is a couple of ways this can be done. You can do it, for example, through any drives which are set up on your computer. You, uh, we can also set up a Dropbox or a OneDrive link or you can simply just copy and paste to upload the different drawings. So I've got my little folder here. I'm just going to simply copy it and paste it in. Now that's going to start to upload the different drawings for us. So if we go back on the software, now we can start to actually create our new projects. And what I'm going to do is just shut down my little cloud storage here because now I can simply see that all my drawings have been uploaded within this folder. So I'll shut that down. And we're going to want to come to this new project button. OK, so we've then got a couple of fields that we can fill in. Now, the only mandatory field that has to be filled in is the actual project code. All the other ones are optional. And you can also come back and fill in things like the project name, the client name and notes at a later date. Uh, if if you're in a bit of a rush. Uh, so for today, I'm just going to fill uh, the main ones out, the project code, the name, and the client name. Oops. And there we are. And I'll just put the client name as Enzyme. Okay. And then as soon as you press that, that actually creates the project for you and then takes you directly in. So what I'm going to be doing today is giving you a guided walkthrough of what all the various different buttons do and actually how you do your takeoff and then move it all across into the estimating software or alternatively just produce it onto a CSV file. So the first button that we get to here is actually our drawing drop down. Now we haven't actually uploaded any drawings yet so you will always start off with this blank drawing.pdf file. So what I'm going to do is come over here to this plus icon, and this is actually how we're going to upload the drawings onto the project, the ones that we uploaded onto the cloud just a moment ago. So you just give this a press, go inside your folder, and what you can do is either just open up a single drawing or you can highlight the multiple different drawings in which you'd like to open, and then simply press that. And that's then going to open up all the various different project uh, drawings for you Sorry, within this project, and you can come and change drawing, of course, in your drop-down menu. Or alternatively, what you can do as well over here to the right is the Manage Drawings button. So by giving this a press, this will show you all of the different drawings that you've done. You can add on any additional ones that you've missed, as well as actually being able to click on any of these and being able to actually replace them, delete them, or even duplicate them in some particular instances. If you have actually uploaded a lot as well, you can use this search function here to filter and narrow it down to what you are after. But for today, we'll just shut that down and we'll carry on moving over. So what we get to next is actually the various different scale uh, options. So this is the scale drop down with it has all of the sort of average ones that you'd expect to see and then a few more as well. And then just to the right of that, we have a custom scale function which we can use. Uh, that will help you if what you need isn't in the drop down menu or if you find that the, the scale given to you on the ledger is actually incorrect. OK, so now what we're going to do is I'm just going to turn the page around just by quickly coming down here to these two uh, tools here. So these will rotate the page for you. And we're actually going to set the scale of uh, this drawing here. So if we move down to the ledger now and we see what it says the scale is, it says it's 1 to 100 at A1. Now, we also do agree that it's A1 as well, which is absolutely perfect which means that there's a good chance that the scale will be correct. So what we're going to do is just come over here, set it to 1 to 100. And then what we're going to want to come down is come straight down to this pen tool. OK, now in here, it holds all the various different measuring tools, as well as being able to put down text labels as well. 
Uh, but what we're after is just this measure length button. So I'm going to give this press and I'm just going to measure the width of a doorway or you could use a scale bar or anything else along lines of that. And that to me seemed absolutely fine and what the sort of thing that we would expect. So that was just a left click and then another left click and a right click to finalize. And that is now showing us that the length I'm measuring is 930, which is sort of the reasonable length that you'd expect to sort of see in this particular instance. Now, if this was coming up incorrect, or for example, the paper sizes didn't match what it says on the software versus what it says on the ledger, use the custom scales tool that we were discussing a moment ago. Give that a press and then follow the instructions on screen. You want to select your first point there, and then you want to select your end point and drag it over to where you want to measure to, and then simply tell it in millimeters what you believe that distance should be. So I'm gonna go for roughly 850, and you can see there that's coming out to 91. So then if I based it more off of a 900 door, then we're definitely getting a lot closer to what we would expect. So then we can just safely round the scale up and then press the confirm button, and now our scale is set. So we definitely know that the scale is one to 100. Okay, so now that we've got that done, let's move down to the next row. Now, the first button here is just your save button. So you want to make sure the fact of you're pressing this when you're leaving the project. Uh, when you do attempt to leave, it will actually ask you if you would like to save before quitting as well, of course. And you can actually set up auto save as well in your system preferences up here. Uh, so that is always worth doing as well. And then what you have after there is the export to estimating button and the export to CSV. Now, we are going to cover those two things and how to do that a little bit later on. So we'll come back to them. Here you have your project preferences. So very similar to your system preferences, but, but anything done in here will only be for this particular project we are working on. Then what we have is our drawing layers. So you can always give this a press and you can see if there are any layers available. Unfortunately, this drawing does not have any layers, but if they did, they would all be in a nice tick box format. So you could actually go through and turn on and off what you would actually like to see. Uh, simply give that a press to then set it back to its original service screen. What you've got after there, of course, the rotate buttons, which we've just discussed, and then you've actually got your zoom in and out buttons. Now, this is not the only way uh, to do the control. You can actually do this using your mouse wheel as well, uh, which mine's currently at, and it zooms in to where your mouse is pointing. So you roll the wheel towards, uh, towards your monitor to zoom in and then back yourself to zoom out. And it is quite sensitive, so it doesn't necessarily need to be rolled very much. So nice smooth movements should make it quite easy to control. If you, if you aren't, however, quite getting on with that method, or you quite simply just prefer the scroll wheel to take you up and down the screen, you can turn the allow mouse mouse wheel to, sorry, yeah, mouse wheel to uh, roll, sorry, up here in your preferences. I'll just show you quickly where that is, actually. Uh, so you just click on there, go to your controls, and then you can see it here. Scroll to zoom in and out. Simply just turn that off, and it will take you up and down the page. And occasionally you might need to just quickly come here and perhaps do it for this project as well. So that might be a particular instance if that's still giving you a problem. Okay, and then you move on from there and you have the pan tool. So that's the simple sort of um, tool just to sort of grab the screen and move around. Now you can actually access that at any given point by simply pushing and holding down the mouse wheel. That's gonna be quite a useful tool, especially when you're actually going along and doing your measures, as we will be using our left click to plot where we would like the measures to go. But uh, we'll, I'll show you an example of that when we actually come to doing uh, the takeoff. Then what you've got is nice, simple undo and redo functions, uh, which are nice and easy. And then what you've got here is actually a background removal tool. So regardless if we actually have layers, obviously what we were discussing earlier, uh, most of the time you should still be able to remove the background of any particular drawings depending on how they're um, how they're all designed by most of the time just hitting the auto background button there is other ways of doing this are these three listed here but um, for today I'll just show the auto background function and there we are that has now completely removed the background of the drawing for us so now we are simply just working with what we actually need to go through and measure and if you do actually would like that background to come on at any given point, simply just go to the Layers tab and then you can just turn the background back on there. It actually creates it as a layer for you, so you can toggle this on and off. Then you have the ability to put in comment lines. Now, these comment lines will actually carry over onto the estimating software. 
unlike the text labels in which will be placed directly onto the drawing, the comment line will actually be logged as a takeoff line item. After that, you have your unit takeoff tools or commonly referred to as free types if you are a user of the estimating. You have the ability to do unit in linear as well as the new functions of being able to take a perimeter, area or a volume measure. Okay, so we'll take you through an example of this with the unit takeoff. But the first thing this is actually going to ask us for is for us to add a service. And it's referring to this bit over here on the screen. Here. Now, what this is going to be used for is helping us identify and categorize the various different takeoff that you're going to be doing for when we move it across into the estimating or when we do our CSV export. So just as a bit of an example, one of what we're doing, I'm just going to write in example and then press OK, which has then added my service over there. And now straight away it's gone back to asking me what we're going to be taking off for the unit takeoff. Uh, we have um, a bit of tray, sorry, um, over here on the drawing. So for example, I'm just going to put, I believe this is 225. Uh, 90 bends just as a bit of an example for us and what we can do is we can actually come in here we can change our various different colors to whichever one we would prefer as well as being able to change our pixel size and add on anything uh, any information as product code hours and cost or we could leave these these all blank and fill them out in the estimating system later on it it totally is up to you so i'm just going to press start now the unit takeoffs are nice and easy and all we're going to have to do is go around and just give it a little click where we need to do our various different counts. Okay, and then when you can finalize what you've done, then with a right click. And then you can see that's actually logged it over here, all under the service of example. Now, moving on to the linear takeoff. It's going to be the same sort of scenario when we're actually going through and filling in our different information with regards to the hours, cost, colors, and description. Obviously, due to the fact that if this is a linear, there is a few different options in which we can do with the measure now, such as linear area measures, volumes, and a bunch of other options that you can see in here as well. So all that will do is actually unlock anything that's put here in the gray area to actually help you with your takeoff. As well, if you're actually doing anything linear, you can actually just do a riser here as well. So what all I'm going to do then is just move part of this description down and then just say this is 225 trunking and then just simply just press the start button and then I can start to go down my run. Now what I'm going to want to do is left click to each corner. There we go. And then in this particular instance, I'm going to hold my mouse wheel down to use the pan tool and just drag myself along so I can see a bit easier left click and then come all the way down to the end and left click again and because we i need to finalize it i'm going to finalize that all with a right click so i don't accidentally over measure just across my drawing there and then i can quickly do the same here so left left and a right as well as then being able to do a left left and then a right click again so that's now taken off of the, all of the trunking which we had to do there other than the various different bends and T's and the other fittings which I've missed off. But just an example of those two, they are nice and easy to do. Now the perimeter, area and volume tool, other than the fact of the measurements they're going to give you, actually how you use each tool is fairly similar. So just give the area of tool for uh, click in this instance and I'm just going to call this example area takeoff. Okay, uh, I am just going to quickly change color this time. I'm going to go for a red. I can include a slope angle if that was applicable. And once again, product code, hours and cost. So all I'm going to do now is just press the start button. And then all you have to do to use these tools is left click to each corner of where you would like to measure. So I'm going to go from corner to corner here. And then finalize that all with a right click. Now that's logged all that information for me there. We can see we have 33.13 meters squared in this particular area. And if there was any element of it which we had to remove, all you'd have to do to do that is simply give it a click, come up here to your cut out takeoff tool that's now become unlocked. And then once again, just draw where it is that you would actually have to remove your different measurements from and finalize that again with a right click again. Now, what all these little circles are, by the way, is actually um, your functionality to actually be able to drag this out and to adjust the measurements live with the white ones. Oops. And I've done something else. I've actually grabbed my measurement because you do have the, the ability to move it as well. So I'm just going to drag that back in. 
And then what these yellow ones are here is actually ability to create new pivot points for yourself. So what you can do with the pivot points is you can actually drag it out and do additional measures and you could repeat that process again and again. So I'm just gonna quickly drag that back in for the sake of what we're doing. Like I said, how you actually do the perimeter area or volume takeoff is all done in the same way. The only thing it really is going to affect is obviously the results in which you're getting down there. Okay, now, now that's how you use all of the takeoff tools. Now all of those are just manually inputted items from yourself when you're going through the system and that's going to be a fairly sort of similar thing of actually when you're coming over here to the add free type subcontract specials and labor only items now when you actually click onto the free type what benefit this actually gives you in here is actually the ability to assign it to what category of item it is which is going to be helpful from the estimating point of view with regards to associating the materials later on actually how you do your takeoff though is exactly the same the subcontract and special, once again, is going to seem very similar to the uh, free type menu. Um, once again, it's with regards to allowing um, certain items, or in this case, um, either large quotations or subcontract work that needs to be carried out. And you have the ability to input that in now on, on the system. And you would take it off all as a unit takeoff because this would effectively just be in, being used as an allowance. And it's the same sort of story when we look at the labor only item as well. You can use it in, in the same regards as a free type and you could input how many hours that you would like to allow. Sometimes this can be nice and suitable because you can do it whilst you're thinking and looking at the drawing rather than waiting until later on once you're in the estimating system. But you will just have to allow it as a single unit count. And then we get over here to our database. Now add item. As soon as you give this press, this is going to give you access to our entire database of the electrical software. And of course, you can still go through and use our various different categorization to help you find items that you need. So, for example, if we were looking for a particular um, form of trunking, just to keep on the subject of what we were doing as takeoff, you can come into here and then you can go through and set our various different manufacturers and then your various different headings and then finally your items or you can just view and use your search function here just to help you go through and find any particular items in which you'd need and what you can actually do is just select any of these items and simply press the start button to start um, either going around and using them as the unit counts or doing the particular linear measures and it does tell you the difference of course here in the method and of course with the linear item again you have the functionality now to add them in as a riser as well as the different options which we've already discussed and what you've actually got along the top here is the ability to actually go into your assemblies button as well quickly which is actually just here on this database as well as being able to access your contractor's choice uh, database that you've made up in the estimating as well so anything which you've made up on the estimating side can be used on enzyme x as normal uh, with actually some few little with uh, some new advantages to it as well so where we've actually gone through and we've measured off our different trunking, I'm going to show us uh, another way of doing it this time. But what we're going to do is um, show you the new functionality of our associated components, which is actually the ability to, to detect and place the automatic change in direction. So here I have a particular example of the trunking size that we need with the 90s and 45s as set up ready. So all I'm going to do is just before we start actually doing this measure is I'm going to remove this particular takeoff that we've done so that can simply done by clicking on it and then pressing the delete button here or simply just pressing delete on your keyboard if that's easier and you'll be able to press yes and remove any of the takeoff that you've done so I'm just going to quickly go through now and remove all of the takeoff that we've just done as we're not going to need that anymore and then what I'm going to do is actually add in the service of what we actually need this time so what we're doing now is the trunking. So I'm just going to put that as my service and press OK. And now that's added it there. If we, for whatever reason, need to go back to our example one or when we add in actual services, we need more. You can simply flick between them like so. So what I'm going to do now is actually go back to my assembly. I'm going to go through and then refine that item. Oh, it's actually already here in our sort of uh, frequently used sort of area. So I'm going to grab that and find with the color being red this time. I'm just going to press the start button. And then what I'm going to do is just zoom in. Oops, 
a little bit more, not quite that much. And now just go around and do our measure. So once again, going to left click from corner to corner, but this time once we've completed it, you're going to notice a few differences when I do the right click now. Now we get these various different circles, which have actually inputted the 90 bends for us. So all you have to do is obviously be careful at T junctions that you finalize your run there and not keep doing the measure because otherwise you're going to put bends in where you would need T's. And then just measure that all the way down. Now this one is slightly off and on the wrong line. So what I'm going to do is quickly just select that as we've seen before. We can simply just drag our lines over a little bit more to make it a bit more suitable for us as well as sort of extending the measurements if needs be as well. Now that's all done in the three individual measures and we will be able to see our various different bends once we move over onto the estimating software. The next button is a frequently used item. So this is going to just remember the top, top um, amount that you use. Now this amount, sorry for the hesitation on that because it can be actually dictated within your preference menu here. You should be able to come and find how many favorites are being shown on screen. And here we are, mine is currently set to 20, but you do have the ability to set up whatever you would prefer. Once again, that can be done within the job on the project preference. Now the refresh data, the only time which you're going to need to press this button is if you've made any changes to any of your database items, such as your assemblies or contractors choice, anything along those lines if you've had the Enzyme X software open. So simply just hit this button, it refreshes the database and it will be able to read everything as new. Or you can simply um, try closing the software down and loading it back up again, but this is of course going to be much quicker. And then what we actually get to on the final last bit here um, is our auto count symbol recognition function. So to actually demonstrate this to you a bit more, I am going to change what drawing we're on and I'm going to go back to my first drawing. So in here I have various different uh, lights in which we'd need to take off. So what I'm going to do is quickly just set the drawing up by rotating it, adding in the service in which we would need, which in this instance is lighting. Make sure that's highlighted over here. And then I'm going to use my background removal function again. Okay, so now we can see everything in which um, which we need to take off. So there's two ways in, in which the auto counting function can be used. Well, technically there's three ways. You can use this auto count button here, which is then just going to use effectively the same as a unit takeoff button over here. Alternatively, you can use any of the things out of the database to actually help you uh, go through and do your auto counting. Uh, and here's a little warning that's basically popped up because I haven't set the scale of this drawing. Uh, I am just going to set it to 1 to 100 for the sake of, the, of what we're doing today. And what we can actually do is any unit item in here, especially uh, it doesn't matter which one we click on, you will always have the ability to use our auto count functionality. And you will have the sort of same thing with regards um, to your other items. It's not going to help with a linear though. Uh, with regards to the contractor's choice. And don't have any, oh, there we are. And I can also do it with my assemblies here on my lighting project. But the first thing we're actually going to want to do before we get carried away and start actually counting everything off is we actually want to make sure that there's not anything in which we don't want to count, such as our uh, key legend here. So what I'm going to do is to show you these two tools up here, area to include for the auto count or area to exclude. In my particular instance, I think it's easier if we just excluded this. And we just do that in the same way in which we use our um, perimeter and area tools up here. So left click into each corner and finally, once you've finished, right click to finalize that. And of course, you will have the same abilities as what you've had before. So to show you the auto count function, then what I'm going to do is just look at this C, uh, this C type light fitting here by using our auto count. And that's literally just what I'm going to call the item for the sake of what we're doing. Uh, I'm going to go for C type light. There we are. I'm happy with the color green. I'm going to select my symbol and I'm just going to highlight one of these C's that we've done. Okay, now that's showing us our symbol in here. One thing that I do recommend that you do 
is if there is multiple shapes is actually split and um, split them up into two groups now this can be easily done if just by pressing the edit symbol what i mean by the two shapes is we've got the square and then of course we have the c there in the middle so i'm going to let the software know that the fact that these are two individual shapes that we are trying to find together and that of course is going to make it a lot more easier for the system as well as actually being able to alter the tolerance in which we're matching as well as as well as uh, changing the deviation, as well as giving it a deviation boost and scanning for the 90, 90 degree rotations. But for today, I'm just gonna hit the count symbol button and just go and leave that to it for a second. There we are. And now it's counted 89 of them and it's colored them all in green. So we can give this a quick overview and just make sure that we're happy with all the information. Now, immediately, I'm, I can't see anything that's wrong with that. But if you do want to double check in a bit more of a finer detail, you can always come up here. Um, sorry, to, to this function here, the review search. So just give this a press, which is then going to show you all of the individual symbols that it has counted. And what you can actually do in here, if you did find anything which was wrong or in which you actually didn't want it to count, just in case it was an emergency one, for example, you can actually go through and you could deselect these various different items, or you could simply just change the quantity of it here. And then after you've after you've altered everything on screen, if you press the count button again, it will go through and alter the quantities for you and de-highlight the icon on screen, or if you're happy with everything that we have done, which I am today, yep then simply just press the shutdown button here. And one thing that you can do to also make life a little bit easier for yourself when going through and working on these different drawings, going back to sort of using the layers functionality that we've used. So what we can do is straight away do the show and hide function, which will instantly, op instantly open up the layers tab for us, but it will also turn off all of the counts that we have just done. Now, once again, I can turn them back on here in the layers. That's why it's sort of switched it over for us. But this now sort of shows me what is actually left to be taken off on the drawing. So without actually going through and sort of doing the various different takeoffs again and again, I just want to show you one other functionality of the auto count and um, what we can do. So all I'm going to do now is just change that back to our services. And what I'm actually going to do is change drawing onto drawing two, which I know is another lighting drawing with various similar symbols. So what I'm gonna do is quickly turn this round. Uh, once again, we need to mark our area of exclusion or inclusion. So I'm just gonna mark this off. There we go. And then what I'm gonna do this time is press this button, which was grayed out on the last drawing. Now what this one is gonna do is go find the exact same symbols that we've just counted and then match them up and count them for us on this drawing as well without us having to go through the same process of what we've just done. So I'm just gonna give this a press. And there we are. It's actually gone through and counted up 204 of these different lights this time. Once again, you could follow the same process of actually reviewing your search of what you've done or doing like what we did before of just simply hiding it all on the screen. And of course, using the background removal, which would make this a lot easier to view. And that is still something that, that we can do now. It's not something that has to be done at the start of a drawing. So I can just go give that a press now. And there we are. That's, of course, obviously making it a lot easier for us to see. And that's actually gone... That's actually gone through and we can make a few adjustments to that if we needed, which we would have needed to in this particular instance. So what I'm going to do now is actually show us how we're going to move across the various different takeoffs that we've done into the estimating software. So what you're going to want to do is actually go through and open the estimating and make sure that you are on the takeoff page of it, uh, which I've actually got prepared for us already. And then just quickly go back to the software and then come back to that export to estimating button, which we spoke about uh, towards the start. So just simply give that a press and that's going to come up with your jobs information. Now that is exactly what I've set up in the estimating. So I'm going to press the start button, which should now have actually have moved it all over into the estimating, ready for us to assign it to the various different sections. So all you have to do now is just press your import PDF button which is then going to show you our various different takeoff lines which we've done and actually on what drawing th these have all been done on as well. So then I can go through and select the multiple ones in which I want. So I've got my two lighting, which I'm going to move on to my ground floor lighting section here and press import. 
And then I've got my trunking for my containment section. And then we've got our area measure, which I'm just going to, for the sake of it, move into our small power section. Now that has nicely moved all of that information across for us. And if I come here to the containment, you can see those bends, which I was saying it was going to automatically add in for us, the four different ones, which is perfect. We can see our various different lights that we've done. So we could adjust any information live on screen, of course, if we want to. If you do need any more help on the estimating side, please, of course, either look at the electrical estimating video or just give us a call on the support button. So coming back on to Enzyme X, though, um, one thing that you can finally do on here is obviously the Excel uh, CSV export. So if you want to do that as well, simply just give that a press, which will then instantly just want to save. And that's going to remember on what project it is that you're working on. So you can actually save it here. Or of course, if you wanted to, you could actually move around and create any other additional sort of folders that you would like to as well. I'm just going to put it here next to uh, within my drawings folder for it and just press save, which has now exported that for me. And then what we can do is just go back onto our cloud storage, go into our drawings, uh, drawings again in my instance, and then we have our free CSVs that it will do. Now what I'm going to do, just the same as we uploaded them, I'm now just going to take them back to my desktop and paste them here. And just as a little bit of an example, I'll open, I'll open it up for you. So this is giving us the merged version, which is actually just showing us, uh, if I do this, I should make it better. This is showing us our various different takeoffs that we've done across the entire project. And then we've also got it broken up into services, and then you've also got a parts one for more detail. So I'll show you both of these as well. Okay. So here, if I break this one up, we have our various different services in which we've actually taken it off of. This is the services one. Uh, other than that, it's still giving you the same information that you, of course, used to seeing. And it is actually giving us um, the material price and the site hours for the particular bend. Um, however, for the assembly, it's not quite as straightforward as that. And of course, that information is built up. And then over here, finally, you have your parts number here as well, which is actually, once again, giving us all the different services, all the different counts that we've done, and it's trying to break it down as much as possible for us. Okay, so that is everything to do with the basics of the Enzyme X software. If you do need any more help with any of this, please, like we mentioned uh, at the start, just go to the support button and get in contact. And always remember, before you uh, leave the job, Make sure you save it. Okay, thank you. Bye.